so I just implemented an entire verification flow for a SaaS application using LangGraph and persistent storage. So the entire flow is pretty straightforward, just like when we call a help desk and they want to verify who we are before they can help us to ask what's our ID, maybe the last four digits of our credit card number, and even our secret question like where we were born. They take all of this information and then they validate it according to their databases and to our answers that we have submitted when we signed up for the service. So this is what we're going to be implemented with LangGraph and it's also going to feature some persistent storage, which is pretty new. And we're going to use SQLite database in order to save our state after we execute each node. So let's go to the code and the repo will also be linked. All right, let's start with our flow. And we'll be using Mistral AI's Mistral Large latest model for most of our workflow. And we're first going to start with our assistant, which its entire job is to collect from us the information that is going to be validated against our database to verify who we are. So it's going to collect our name, our ID, our last four digits of our credit card number and our secret answer to the question of where we were born. So after we all do all of this and we do it with the collect info node, which is going to take the input from the user and the assistant is going to prompt it field by field. So we don't want all the information at once. We want to get it gradually. And we have a conditional branch. So as long as we didn't finish getting all of the information we need, we will go back to the assistant. So we close that loop over here. And if we did collect all the information, now it's time for the verification flow. Now, if the verification is successful, then we want to go to our agent with tools, which we can perform operations against our SaaS application. And if not, we'll head back to the assistant. Now, the agent with tools is going to go to safe tools because I haven't implemented any non-safe tools. So we have only one tool to get us information uh, of our user from our database. All right, let's see the demo. So I'm going to run this and I'm going to query what information do you have about me? Now notice that the thread ID here is 888 and this is going to be important because we're going to be using persistent storage which is going to help us make our application stateful. And what LangGraph is going to do for us is going to checkpoint our state into a persistent database. And here we're going to be using SQLite and it's going to do that after every node's execution. So this will actually give us the ability to stop our graph execution to go drink some coffee and then to resume it from the same time. And this is very important when we want to implement real world use cases like getting feedback from the user and it will control where do we need to go in our graph. And we gave it the thread ID of 888 and usually this will actually be the session ID of the user. All right, so we asked our assistant to give us all the information that it has on me. So this will be retrieved from our database. We have a tool for that. And let's continue in chat with our assistant. So we get back. I'm here to assist you. I need to collect information. Please give me your full name so I can validate in our systems. All right, let's go and write Eden Marco. And now our assistant is asking for us to give it our ID. And I want to show you our database, our SQL database, which LangGraphs created a checkpoints table inside it. And every record in this table is going to be our state and our execution after we execute a node. So for example, let's go and take the last record we have and let's go and copy that. And let's just go to VS Code so we can uh, paste it and format it nicely. And right over here, we can see now all of the executions of our nodes. And this was uh, the input. Then we added our name and um, you can see it right over here. This was our input and all the information about our graph execution we have here. So this is pretty cool and this is very useful. Now let's continue. So they want the ID. Let's write here some number, but let's also add here X. And this is supposed to fail. 
and we're getting that the ID that we entered is incorrect because we added a character and a letter and it only needs numbers. So let's go and fix it. So I'm simply going to write here a number which is going to match the number saved in our database. All right, so it prompted us that it now needs the city that we were burn. And let's see what we have in our database. And we should have extra nodes that we executed and extra information. And we can see it right over here. Um, so if I'm going to take the last one, let's just take it up a bit. And let's take what we have here in the checkpoint. Let's format it. And now we can see we have also the provided ID, which is cool. So we can see that everything I'm inputting is matched from our database, double quotes. It's not really a database. It's a simple JSON file I wrote and with all of the information that I'm going to validate against it. All right, so we can see that we're prompted what city I was born. Let's stop this execution. Okay, so I'm going to stop everything. And we can see that we have here a file which is called checkpoint SQLite. And here LangGraph is saving and checkpointing the state upon each node's execution. Now, of course, I can use a remote database like a GCP Cloud SQL or AWS RDS or SOPA base, whatever I want. But right now I'm using it locally. So if you're going to build some production applications that it is supported and you can actually do it. Anyways, let's go back and I want to show you now that um, we are, once we'll resume this execution because we have the same ID and I'm going to rerun it, we will begin from the same place that we finish. So you can see now we're being prompted to uh, enter the city I was born in. And if I'm going to stop it and add one to our ID, so this is a fresh new, um, fresh new run, we can see now it doesn't have anything. So it doesn't have the memory. So this is pretty cool. Let's go switch it back to our example and let's go and rerun it. So now we want to enter which city I was born. So I was actually born in Los Angeles. All right, so now it wants the last four digits of my credit card. And here I simply put 5555. So let's enter that. We still get this uh, message, so let's uh, prompt it with something empty. And we still got that we need to fill out our four digits. So to fix it, uh, I'll just add a space before I enter the number. It usually uh, fixes those issues. Anyway, now we're going to the verification node and we can see that we have a verification success. And this is because we validated against our database, which is our profile.json file, uh, the information that we just gave. All right, so let's continue. We can see we have a tool call to the tool get info from DB with the args of name equals to Eden Marco. And we can see finally the tool message, which is going to contain the answer upon our tool execution. Uh, let's take a look, uh, for example, about the title and everything seems correct. Let's even open um, the profile picture. And yeah, that's me a couple of years ago. And if you want, let's go to Langsmith and let's go and take a look at our trace. And we can see that we have our land graph trace here of all our node executions and a lot of information and uh, we have here. Uh, we can see at the end, we executed the get from DB tool, uh, which gave us this output information. All right, so now I want to show you a bit of the code. And by any means, this is not production ready. There are a lot of cases I didn't handle and the code is not that clean, so it does need heavy refactoring, but let's see the gist of it and what I implemented. Of course, you can take a look at the repo in the description of this video. 
All right, so we can see here we have our assistant node. So it's going to be using Mr. AI large latest. And the system prompt is basically that it is a system that needs to get information in order to validate it, but it needs to get it gradually. So we need to collect it one piece after another. We can see which informations do we need to collect, the name, ID, city of birth, and four digits of credit card. And we can see that we also plug in the user question, the history of our messages here, and to explicitly tell the LLM what we have collected so far. And the assistant node is pretty straightforward. It will receive the tape as an argument. It will run uh, this prompt that we just saw, and then it will move into the collect node which is going to have at the beginning here a place to get the input from the user. It's going to basically use the same prompt as before. However, here I'm going to use structured output with a dedicated Pydantic class I created for the required information. And this chain is going to return me a required information object, so which we're going to gradually build and fill in all of the required informations with iterations because we have a loop in our graph. And this node is going to update our state with appending the last message that the person gave. And of course, updating the required information that we collected. All right, so after we finish this node, we want to check whether we have collected all of the information. And for that, we have a conditional edge, which is going to execute this function. It's basically going to see if all of the fields that we want uh, exist and they have a value. And if we have collected everything, then we can go to the verify information node, which will compare it against our database. And if not, we simply want to go back to our assistant. All right, so after we collect all the information, we want to verify it. So this is the function which verifies, which should access a real database, but right now it's simply loading this JSON file I created with some mock data. And it's going to compare the user input to supposedly the logged in user, which is going to be me. All right, our last node is going to be our assistant with tools which is going to simply decide which tool we're going to use. And let's have a look on our state. So our assistant graph state is going to hold our user question, our original question. It's going to have the required information. So this is what we're getting from the user and we're going to update this in the state dynamically after we get the input from the user. We have the messages, which is going to be the history, and we have the verify flag, which is going to indicate whether we have successfully verified the required information and that it matched the information we have in our double quotes database. All right, so this is the file of the graph. So we have a bunch of conditional edges that we are building. For example, provided all details is going to direct us either to collect more information or to continue to the verification. The verified conditional step is going to tell us whether we can continue to use our agent with the tools or to go back to the assistant to gather more information. And the route safe, no safe is going to decide whether this tool is safe. So it doesn't have destructive operations or it's not. So I haven't implemented any other operations than reading. So it should always go to safe. And here we are creating the nodes. We're setting uh, the entry points. We're using also tool node. And yeah, we're simply connecting all the dots together until we have this beautiful graph we have here. All right, so that was pretty much it. I didn't cover all of the code and you have the repository so you can review it later. Feel free to comment on my code and tell me what you think. Of course, this is not production grade code. This is simply a POC just to see how we can implement a verification flow within LangGraph. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.